G'day, my name is Brian from Bijan Tech. We're going to look through this Asus Xbook B7 Flip. Now, it is a 14 inch business class convertible laptop. Now, what I mean by convertible, you can pretty much flip it screen around and then it can also get a pen or digital stylus, which you can come with, and then you can do some note taking or even some drawing, which we'll have a look at a little bit later on. Now, I will be looking at the different features which is quite a lot in this Xbook Book B7. And we're also looking to the temperatures and fan noise as well as do the line jitter test. And we'll have the internals. Now, as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to different sections that you may be interested to save you time. Now, first off, we're gonna start off what this computer can be configured with. Now, with the processor wise, it is using the 11th gen Intel Core and you can even get an i5 or an i7. And as for the RAM wise, it can go up to maximum capacity of 64 gigs of RAM. And it has two sole DIMM slots, so you can upgrade a little bit later on. As for the storage, it has a one slot of M.2 and it has the capacity going to 2280 format. And as for the graphics, it is using the Intel integrated graphics, which is the RS XE, which does pretty decent here. Now, as for the display wise, it is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means there are four options. Now, two of the options is the wide screen ultra extended graphics array, and you can get a 400 nit brightness and also a 500 nit brightness. Now, the 500 nit brightness has the privacy screen version, which I actually have here, which we'll demonstrate a little bit later on. Now, as for the other one, which is the 2K option, or what we call as the widescreen quad extended graphics array. Again, you have the 400 nit version, and then you also have the 500 nit version, which is the privacy screen version. Now, they both have a pretty much a matte finish to the display for anti-glare. I did test this outdoors and I found it in direct sunlight. I was still able to quite happily read the screen, especially with text and as well as consuming a bit multimedia. I still find in direct sunlight. Now, if I put the sun right on behind me and bang on directly into the display, I won't be able to see too much there. Now, a lot of display is has that same issue, but still this anti-glare matte finish does fairly really well in cutting out a lot of reflection. Now, when in the shade, this is, has no problems at all, this display. Now, also testing out for the backlight, I did not find much light leaks around the backlight uh, for this display. Now, it is a nice, gorgeous display, and I love this matte finish to this 16 by 10 display. And we have not too much of a bezel of between the top and also on each side. Measuring the color gamut coverage of the widescreen ultra extended graphics array, it resulted with 96.6% sRGB coverage, 68.3% Adobe RGB coverage, and 70.9% DCI P3 coverage. This is a demonstration of the privacy screen on the Asus Xbook B7 Flip. At the moment, I've got it turned off. I'm going to turn it on now, so it's function two. And at the moment, as we're straight head on, this shouldn't make any difference there. So I'm going to turn it off again. And we're going to go to about 45 degrees. That's about 45 degrees angle here. Now I'm going to turn it on. And I'll let you see the difference. Now I'm going to turn it off. And now I'm going to go to about 60 degrees. About 60 degrees here. I'm going to turn it on. And I'll turn it off. And I'll turn it off on again. And we're going to go to about 45 degrees to give you a difference. And I'm going to turn it off. So I'm now we're just going to do it with without it on. So we'll just see what it looks like. And I'm just going to go for around what it looks like here. So this is what it looks like without it on. And now I'm going to turn it on now. And hopefully you'll see what the difference is. And as, as I'm arcing through towards back to the front and I'll go to the side again, just to give you a bit of a demonstration what it looks like with the privacy screen. The Xbox B7 Flip does have a 720p webcam. Now it also has a webcam shield, which is just a nice little lever, which you can just have a little flick and you will see a physical shadow that goes over it. So you don't need the blue tack or electrical tape anymore.
This is a recording from the 720p webcam from the Xbox B7 Flip. This is the video and the audio unedited so I can hear and see what the quality of the webcam is like. Now currently I've got two types of lights currently turned on. I've got my down lights in this room for ambience and also one of my studio light turned on as well. So I'm just going to turn on my one studio light off and see this. Now my two down lights in front of me is quite far away so there's not much light hitting on my face right now. So this is what I consider a dark or low light environment. Now, if you're in an office environment, you should get much more light than what I am currently at. So I'm going to turn on my one studio light back on. And of course, hopefully, better quality light gives you better quality picture. Now, I'd definitely love to hear what your thoughts are of the quality of this webcam. Now, I do also have the noise cancelling on, on this Asus Xbox Book B7 Flip as well, too. Now, currently, it's actually got three settings. There is actually a 360 degrees noise cancellation. So it also cancels the ones from the side as well as the bunk back and front. I've currently got that currently on right now. Now, I'm actually going to turn off the noise cancelling off completely so you can hear. Now, I am in a very noisy environment uh, with ambience, which is around about 48 decibels. So that's quite loud. Uh, it's because I've got a few computers testing as always. So this is now without the noise cancellation on. So that is, hopefully you'll hear the background noise. Now I'm actually just going to turn on the front and back AI noise cancelling and we'll leave the sides alone. So this is what it sounds like with just the noise cancellation of just the front and back. So it doesn't really cancel the sides. And now I'm going to put on 360 degrees. So this is now 360 degrees AI noise cancellation. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are of this noise cancellation on this 720p webcam. Put a comment below. There are four speakers on this Xbox B7 Flip. There are two located on each side on the bottom as well as two on the front bottom side of it. So that's four. And I tested out the maximum volume of the speakers and it matched them measured in a peak of 82.3 decibels, which is pretty decent. And if you're in a cafe environment, that'd still be well heard. As for sound quality of the speakers, it surprisingly had quite a lot of bass. Now the bass itself isn't that really low end thumping bass, it still has quite a bit of bass that I was actually very surprised by. Now as for the mids wise, they were actually quite strong, but I did find them quite what I would say hollow, uh, and the highs were quite very strong as well. But overall, when I say balance wise, it's probably more balanced towards the low end. Uh, so like I said, more pace than what I was expecting from a business class laptop. Now, as for the distortions, I didn't find too much distortion once we bring up the volume at all. Now, as for the acoustic wise, you're pretty much at 360 degrees, which does very well. Even in tablet mode, I didn't have too much issue trying to hear it from the speakers. Audio sample of the speakers at 100% volume. The B7 Flip does come with a 63 watt hour battery. It also comes with a 65 watt power adapter, which charges via the USB C. So you can use the two USB C's to charge this B7 Flip. Now, as for the battery life of this, I did test my usual five different modes. Now, this is one running under the Windows 11 mode, and for Best performance, I managed to get an hour and 45 minutes. In balance mode, I managed to get an hour and 45 minutes as well. In best power efficiency, I managed to get three hours and 45 minutes. And in battery cell mode, I managed to get four hours and 30 minutes. And in my media mode, I managed to get eight hours. Now, I just want to again, want to give you a bit of disclaimer that all my battery life tests, I do put a very consistent workload across all the system resources. So you should expect better numbers than what I'm giving you as most applications don't hit the system resources as consistently or as, as much as I would 
in my battery life test. So I'm just giving you the worst case scenario. The weight of the B7 Flip is 1.48 kilos plus the 65 watt power adapter becomes a combined weight of 1.82 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. As for the temperatures and fan noise of the B7 Flip, when I took my measurement, my ambient temperature was 21 degrees Celsius and the room ambient noise was 36 decibels. Now, before I give you the numbers, as always, your average hand is about 33 to about 34 degrees Celsius. So you can just give you a bit of reference points to see either how hot or how cold this B7 could be. I took my base measurement when the computer was on idle and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in a maximum of 28 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it was at 36 decibels, so practically quiet. And the average internal core temperature was 34 degrees Celsius. Then I put 20% load on the computer, which is pretty much average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, surfing web, streaming video, and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 34 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it went up to a maximum of 39 decibels. And as for the average internal core temperature was 53 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 37 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 41 decibels. As for the average internal core temperature was 62 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 39 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, hit a maximum of 45 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 80 degrees Celsius. Also measured the bottom back cover when it was had 100% load and the hottest area measured in at 40 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, of course, stayed at 45 decibels. I also measured the computer when it was in tablet mode and on the display side, the hottest area measured in at 28 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it stayed at 38 decibels and the average internal core temperature was about 41 degrees Celsius. Now, it's putting a bit of average load on that. Now, as for the keyboard side in tablet mode, the hottest area on the keyboard measured in at 33 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, of course, stayed at 38 decibels. Seeing the results of the temperature and fan noise and putting a lot of load, it really isn't that hot in laptop mode. Now, it's when you're in tablet mode and doing your average use, it is quite easy to touch and you wouldn't have too much issue at all. Let's have a look at stability performance of the processor in the Xbook B7 Flip. This particular unit has configured an i7-1195G7 and looking on the Intel website, it reports that it has a maximum turbo boost of 5 GHz and it has a base clock speed of 2.9 GHz at 28 Watt TDP and it can go all the way down to 1.3 gigahertz at 12 watt tdp if it's feeling hot or it's trying to save power but ideally because i have it connected to mains power i do want it to see it at 2.9 gigahertz or above i had this computer set to performance mode for the power scheme and i also have the power scheme set to best performance as well in windows 11. I've had this computer running on 100% load for the last nine and a half hours. And I can see that the speed of the processor is anywhere between 3.4 gigahertz to about 3.7 gigahertz. So I'm gonna average it out around about 3.5 gigahertz at its stable clock speed, which is above the reported 2.9 gigahertz for this processor, which is absolutely fantastic to see. So the thermal solution is doing its job pretty well in this Xbook B7 Flip. Now the average internal core temperatures, I would say around about 87 degrees Celsius. And now let's have a look at the behavior of a single core performance. And I'm gonna start a single core task in Citibench R23 and start the clock watch. And we can just see, at, see how the processor it's at. 4.6 gigahertz after the first 10 seconds and we are quite high up there close to the 5 gigahertz at maximum turbo boost and we did see a massive spike very quickly up here and then now it's just settled at 4.6 gigahertz 
even after 30 seconds. I do have this connected to mains power and set to the fan profile to performance mode and we have set it to best performance in the power scheme in Windows 11. Now we're about to finish off this single core task and I've noticed this processor is mostly sitting at 4.6 gigahertz but ever so often it does spike down to about 4.3 gigahertz for about three to five seconds and then after it will slowly make its way back to about 4.6 gigahertz so i would just say that would probably be about a stable at 4.6 gigahertz for the single core performance the b7 flip also has a very cool unique feature that is used for business productivity work and that is status light yes you can tell very quickly help other people around you just to have a glance that you are in a video conferencing or you can say i am not want to be disturbed and that is a nice little status light right behind the logo on the top right hand corner behind the display you can turn it on manually but it will automatically turn on if it detects a video conferencing system that you are currently in a meeting it will also turn that on at the moment so you can manually turn it on which i will do now it's function one you hopefully you see a little red light on the logo just to tell other people very quick glance that you are at the moment do not want to be disturbed you can also turn that off manually by pressing one again or pressing one again will then put it in auto for when it detects in a video conferencing meeting that is a very cool feature for business productivity work let's have a look at the keyboard now the U keyboard is what i'll call a standard asus keyboard it's actually quite nice we've got quite a bit of key travel they're quite quiet as well they've got a bit of smooth texture to each individual key and i would say they're about quite medium large for each individual key as well now spacing in between is quite narrow which is decently very easy to type on i wouldn't have any two complaints now you'll probably see something very unique in this keyboard and you'll see that one two, three, and four keys are is highlighted with sort of like a white sort of surrounding there. Now these are unique keys that actually can be customized in the Zeus software, but just to let you know that function one will actually put the status light I've told to you about. And then function two is because this one has the privacy screen, you actually can enable that or disable that with function two. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit later on. Now, function three and function four is just for you to customize for later on. And as for the trackpad, how the trackpad is a nice wide. Now, I was thinking it was going to be having issues where, because it is mechanical. So it is hinged at the top and you can depress it at the bottom. And I thought maybe we might have some issues being such a wide trackpad that I might be pressing on it when I am typing. But when I found, when I actually got my palms on it, I wasn't really touching the trackpad that much. So hence, I didn't have any issues accidentally depressing the trackpad while I'm typing. So that's absolutely fantastic. And we got a very silky smooth texture to the trackpad. And also, Zeus has been very nice. I love these nice little features that the Zeus have done. And on the top right hand corner, you can actually press on it and you also see the number pad that's built into the trackpad. Now, that's absolutely great to see that even though we don't have a number pad on the right, we also have a number pad later on. You can, if you do a lot of data entry, that's absolutely great. And then you can just press that top right hand corner and it'll disappear. Now, while that trackpad is on you can still use it as like a normal trackpad but of course when if you press it too hard it will then engage in those numbers that you're there but else i think there's that great sort of system that compromises not having a trackpad this is absolutely fantastic ingenious idea from azus now having a look at the palm rest texture it is actually quite rough you actually might probably hear this through the microphones it's actually quite a rough texture Though it's smooth, but it's actually more rougher than that very nice silky smooth that you might expect from plastic. But this has a very nice texture to it in what it's been built. It's got a bit of a glittery, nice little grayish black uh, with a bit of a glitter of like blue and blue green. I kind of like the actual look at it. If you really look into it really hard, it's actually quite nice, the actual texture of the color of the plastic they've used. And it's of course quite durable uh, as you can probably look. So sorry about that. And putting quite a bit of twist here. So that's not bad. 
oh, it doesn't really bend up well, but at all. So we've got, this is quite, quite durable for lasting a lot of time. So that's quite nice. That's done that for it. very well done. Now let's uh, might as well have a look at the hinge. So I'll just do the one finger test. So that's actually quite smooth all the way through and you can see it actually lifts up a little bit once you get through to the 180 degrees. And of course being two way can go all the way to the other end. Now I'm also going to just have a look at when this is how it clamps while well, I've got it in my hand. I can see it's clamping very well. It's not actually letting that gap any at all while I'm actually doing the wiggle test for the hinge. So the hinge is very nicely well made and we've got quite a bit of nice good metal around for the hinge. So it's gonna last for quite a bit of time. So let's perform the jitter test or the line test. And I'm gonna start off with my diagonal lines. And I'm going to try and just do them slowly now Please beware, I am not a digital artist. Now you probably noticed something that's just happened is I've only got one palm on the display and you probably just saw it just zoomed out there. Now one thing I have noticed on this display is the palm rejection is not fantastic. It actually is quite sensitive to touch and I'm just gonna do some very quick lines. You see what's happened there. Now I'm actually gonna bring, to try and help complete this off, but I'm gonna bring in an extra microfiber glove. Now I know some people do use drawing gloves to help them out, to stop that from happening, and also just to give it more smoothness. Now I'm just gonna do my diagonal lines again. And that's looking good. Now I'm gonna bring in a ruler. I don't even need to worry about trying to put two hands in, as before I said. With just one hand, I've already got some issues with palm rejections. Okay, so that's with the ruler. I'm just going to try and whiff my palm in here, see how it goes. That's what it looks like. I'm just going to do some horizontal lines. As you can see, the palm rejection is quite not doing a fantastic job. I have just run across the bottom part and that's probably what's happened here. And as you can see, it's just doing that again. So I'm just gonna bring in this in. So they really do need to work on improving the palm rejection on the B7. And I'll just do some swirls. Again, I'm not a digital house, I'm not that fantastic at just trying my best to keep this as even as possible here. And I'm just gonna have a check of the parallax. It's actually quite responsive, so we don't have too much parallax there, which is absolutely great to see. The pen does have 4,096 levels of pressure, and I'll just demonstrate that now. So light, hard, light, hard, light. Hard. And I'll just do some writing. As you see, palm rejection is an issue here. Let's have a look at the internals of the B7 flip. Now, first off, you need to remove the back cover, and they are using Phillip head screwdrivers, which is good and there are 12 of them. So just remove them and then as always, my tip is to actually pry from the hinge and work your way across and then along the sides. Now I've just removed this one and it's a little bit of a different sight here as we actually see quite a bit of heat shields in this. Now they are held in by a few screws and I've undone just to speed up time. So we will see down here is a 63 watt hour battery. And then right above there, we've got a heat shield here. This is the M.2 SSD. And then on the left of here is another heat shield. I'll just undo this one. This is the cellular, also the Wi-Fi module as well. Now above here is an interesting module. It's a daughter card. I've actually undid screws and really put it back in. Basically, I think it is a USB daughter card to actually control it. 
Now looking on the right hand side, we need to undo a few more screws. And I'll just lift that heat shield there. Now on the right hand side, we'll see that we've got the CMOS battery here. So you need to undo it. And if you need to undo this battery or just unplug the battery for diagnostic problem, then this is the plug here to, to disconnect the battery. And then underneath this heat shield, it is held in by another two more screws. I've just removed that one there. And then we see the two sodium slots for the RAM. And of course, we've got the processors laying right underneath. Here's the results of the benchmarks for this B7 Flip. This one's configured with an i7 1195G7 with 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte gig SSD. And here is the results for Passmark, Citibench R23, PCMark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, Procon Office, Procon Photo Editing, Procon Video Editing, Pugin Photoshop, Pugin Premiere Pro, Pugin DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Luxmark, Compute Bench, Eugene Engine, and Spec View Pref. And some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, Far Cry 6, Immortal Phoenix Rising and F1 2021. Overall, ASUS has done an absolutely fantastic job on this Xbook B7 Flip. We have an absolutely great display. I love the upgrade of the 16x10 and have quite a good uh, brightness and having that matte finish on our tool one is absolutely fantastic. We don't get much glare from that. And has a good keyboard and trackpad, especially that trackpad is amazing. And we have a, quite a lot of features surrounding this B7 Flip. The only thing I like to see is maybe having a 1080p webcam option as we're doing more content creation. It was nice to have a better quality webcam in there. And also the speakers, just a little bit more louder would be fantastic just for if we're in a much more noisy environment, but still the speaker quality is quite nice is there. But the biggest improvement I like to see from the B7 Flip is the palm rejection. It's just a little bit more too sensitive or not doing a well job at rejecting the palm as I'm accidentally touching, especially when you're doing a bit of writing on the display. But else, this is absolutely a fantastic business laptop. If you find this video informative or you enjoyed it, smash that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week and also have membership as well by hitting that join button if you want to support me further which is right next to the subscribe button and as always imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting and i'll catch you in the next video see ya